My name is Benjamin Dome, and this is a discussion of gluteus medius teres, technique, and indications. Gluteus medius teres, or abductor teres, have been dubbed the rotator cuff tear of the hip. The clinical presentation may sometimes be a pop or a sudden injury, but more commonly is a refractory lateral sided hip pain. It's most common in people in 50s or 60s, and much more common in females than in males. Most commonly, patients will fail a series of corticosteroid injections by the time they've reached an orthopedic surgeon. One of the heralds of this problem is abductor weakness. One would think that trochanteric bursitis alone would not be a competent cause of abductor weakness, and that finding on clinical exam may suggest a gluteus medius tear. Inevitably, the physician is faced with the dilemma of uh, discerning between refractory trochanteric bursitis versus an underlying tear of the gluteus medius and or minimus. The anatomy of the greater trochanter has been defined into four facets, the superior posterior, the lateral, the posterior, and the anterior. The gluteus medius spans the superior posterior and lateral facet insertions. The gluteus minimus on the right inserts on the anterior facet of the greater trochanter. The lateral facet shown here in the coronal MRI on the right uh, is the insertion of the thinner part of the gluteus medius which is most commonly involved in tears. The three arrows mark the tendinous insertion on the lateral facet and the larger arrow marks the iliotibial band which runs directly over the lateral facet. It is important to discern between the IT band and the gluteus medius. It should also be noted that the tendinous portion of the gluteus medius is on the deep side of the muscle belly. The superior posterior facet insertion is a much thicker, stouter portion of the gluteus medius tendon, and therefore probably less commonly involved in tears or pathologic findings. The anterior facet seen best on axial views is the insertion of the gluteus minimus. And finally, the posterior facet is a bare area where there is only trochanteric bursa. In 1999, Kagan et al. described seven cases of partial thickness tears of the gluteus medius, all repaired open, with 45 months follow-up, all free of pain. And indeed, we still use open gluteus medius repairs primarily for large, full thickness, retracted tears. In the picture on the left, you see a bald greater trochanter with a tendon retracted three to four centimeters, and this is a massive U-shaped tear of the entirety of the gluteus medius insertion. This required a large open repair with a margin convergence and a many anchored repair. We've described the endoscopic and arthroscopic uh, techniques for gluteus medius repairs, both for partial thickness tears and for, open, uh, for uh, full thickness tears. Uh, the partial thickness tears may be approached through the transtendinous endoscopic approach. The following video will demonstrate the endoscopic transtendinous technique. We begin <coughs> with fluoroscopic guidance to access the peritrochanteric space, and portals may be placed in a variety of locations around the peritrochanteric space. A trochanteric bursectomy is necessary in order to expose the tendinous insertion. Uh, the understanding of the uh, arthroscopic or endoscopic anatomy of the peritrochanteric space is important in order to elucidate the tendon insertion, which can then be probed and the deep-sided tendon tear identified. A longitudinal split is made using a beaver blade or sharp tool, and this is uh, in line with the fibers of the tendon. You note in the diagram at the bottom, uh, the tear is most commonly on the deep surface. Uh, where the tendon actually attaches to the bone. In order to access that deep surface for a partial tear, we work through this transtendinous split. Through the transtendinous split, we can debreed the torn and damaged portions of the tendon uh, and leave the good portions, which are attached more distally, on the lateral facet. We'll then perform a decortication of the lateral facet in order to create a bleeding bed of bone for healing. Next, we'll place anchors through this longitudinal split. And the anchors, of course, will provide us uh, with a means of repairing the good tendon to the bone.
After the anchor has been placed, any variety of suture shuttle instruments may be used in order to accomplish the passage of the suture through the anterior and posterior limbs of the tendon. The diagram at the bottom of the screen illustrates the mattress configuration in which the sutures will be passed. After completion of the suture passage, the sutures are tied arthroscopically, and this completes the closure of the tendon over the bleeding bed of bone. A very different entity is the full thickness tear of the gluteus medius. Uh, for this uh, particular uh, entity, uh, we'll begin with a debridement of the bursa once again. And after we've debrided the bursa, we'll expose a very large tear in this case with a retraction of the tendon away from the bone. This is essentially a bald greater trochanter. So on the left, you can visualize the tendon. And as we retract it, we see that the entire greater trochanter is bald and there are enthesophytes from the chronicity of the tear on the trochanteric tip. So as before, we'll decorticate the greater trochanter in order to achieve a bleeding bed of bone. And you note that the, in, uh, the footprint of the insertion of the gluteus medius is very large. It's at least three centimeters from proximal to distal and at least four centimeters from anterior to posterior. In this case, because of the uh, large size of this tear, we'll undertake a double row transtendinous equivalent tendon repair. The first row uh, is passed in the uh, proximal part of the lateral facet insertion. And it's important that these sutures be passed uh, uh, substantially proximally within the tendon. Uh, remember, the tendon is on the deep surface of the muscle belly. So from the peritrochanteric space view, one cannot appreciate how proximally the tendon actually goes. So from this view, it appears that the sutures are passed through muscle belly, but on their deep surface, they're passed through tendon. So we tie the knots, having achieved very large bites of the tendon and the musculotendinous junction. And this completes the fixation of our proximal row. And we see that uh, we have quite a bit of tendon remaining uh, to complete the double row repair. And we'd like to compress all of this remaining tendon against the lateral facet where we've created a bleeding bed of bone. We'll accomplish this with a suture bridge construct. So we take one limb of suture from each of the knots and uh, anchor it to a uh, distal anchor. Uh, this is uh, near the vastus ridge. So you see a total of four sutures being brought here to the distal anchor, one from each of the proximal row knots. And then we'll place a second anchor in the distal row. And this will contain the other four limbs of suture. Uh, again, one limb of suture from each of the knots, such that we achieve a crisscross suture bridge construct, which compresses the tendon against the bleeding bed of bone on the lateral facet. Here is the completed double row suture bridge repair of this full thickness tear of the gluteus medius. We have studied the outcomes at uh, two years, and this has been recently published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine. In our initial uh, pilot group of 15 patients, average age 58 years old, all were repaired endoscopically. Uh, we restricted weight bearing for six to eight weeks. 14 out of 15 had good or excellent outcomes, and there was an average improvement of more than 30 points for all patient reported outcome scores. In conclusion, gluteus medius tendon tears are a real problem. Many cases of trochanteric bursitis may have an underlying gluteus medius tear, and favorable results have been achieved with endoscopic repair. 
There are many t challenges involved. Uh, the hip is a deep joint and a tight joint, uh, and conceptual uh, challenges in the hip include the workup and the surgical indications. Obviously, educational opportunities in this field are of great value. Uh, the Chicago Comprehensive Hip Fellowship at the American Hip Institute uh, has been a resource for those who have trained, uh, and the Orthopedic Learning Center and other centers provide uh, regular courses which can be of great value as well. Thank you very much, and I'm Benjamin Dome.